I try to uh, express an idea that I have or maybe just a series of ideas that go together cohesively that I want to express visually. So I, I just kind of consider myself someone who thinks in a visual way, um, which I guess is what an artist is. I always notice things that's, that people may not really take into account. Like, um, I always will uh, kind of fixate on different colors or different things that are around me visually that um, I would like to think most people are too busy to notice. And as long as I can remember, I've been drawing and really fascinated, especially with color. And um, some of my earliest memories are drawing, especially drawing animals. And it was a way that I got noticed in school. Um, it was a way that I could interact with other people and, you know, adults and students that were in my class and bring them pleasure and happiness um, through something I did. And so it was like a positive feedback loop for me that just made me keep wanting to uh, keep doing it and I'm still doing it. My style definitely uh, t draws a lot of inspiration from um, children's illustrations and cartoons and uh, video games too. It really influenced me quite a bit. I like things that are kind of upbeat and happy but at the same time have maybe a little twist of sadness or darkness to them. Um, so you have the kind of contrast of this seemingly whimsical thing with um, something that may be deeper or more powerful. And, and I love um, potentially making art that can be appreciated on different levels. I tend to be more uh, inspired by the natural world um, and storytelling. Uh, I, I have done work in the past that was about my own personal experiences, but uh, I currently am working on work that's about um, uh, climate change and uh, animal extinction um, that's being caused by uh, human, uh, human intervention with nature, essentially. If I had to choose one piece that I like the most that I've ever made, uh, it probably was a piece I made in 2008, and it was a very big painting. Um, it was probably four foot by six foot, and it was a painting of the last passenger pigeon ascending to heaven um, on a rocket of her own excrement with a lot of buffaloes and uh, wolves like looking on as she went up to heaven. Um, and it's funny because uh, that piece is kind of um, chosen the path of what I'm going to be doing for my thesis show as a graduate student. Um, I kept thinking about how much I loved that painting and why I loved it. Um, and I was like, well, why don't you continue to research um, animal extinction and try to do some other paintings that maybe um, have that line of thought behind them. So if I had to choose a favorite, I would say the assumption of Martha. Well, right now I'm in graduate school for um, painting, so a lot of my schooling in graduate school is making my art. You know, I'm working pretty much night and day whenever I can on my thesis show. These guys, they're gonna be, um, if you look at that print in the back, um, there's gonna be this giant stuffed smoke wolf coming out of a factory and he's gonna be raining acid rain. And the thesis show is called Orange Seas and Robot Bees. And uh, it has to do with combining um, different animal myths um, with uh, realities that we're facing right now with um, pollution, um, animal extinction, and uh, climate change. So um, for example, I'm taking the story of Noah's Ark and having um, I made a series of 100 uh, ceramic animals that are going to be marching along a 69-foot wall in the gallery towards a rocket ship 
that's going to be taking them away from the planet. Um, and they're all animal species that are very close to extinction. And again, that kind of goes back to that painting I was talking about earlier, the Assumption of Martha, where the last passenger pigeon ascends to heaven. I have this fascination with um, where do animal species go once the last one is gone from this planet. I think as corny as it is, Athens is really pretty. You know, I just felt really, really happy uh, with the natural environment down here and the town and everything. And I mean, as lame as it sounds, it was really, really pretty and I just wanted to live here. And I've lived here for 13 years. I have not moved away since and I have not really looked back. I do think Athens, without a doubt, maybe enhanced that um, innate um, interest in natural forms and animal fo forms quite a bit because we are surrounded by nature here. We actually, this is one of the most biodiverse um, places um, in America, right here. Um, my biggest achievement, probably technically, is um, having a solo show in Richmond, Virginia in 2010. Um, I haven't done a lot of gallery showing as an artist. Um, I, tend, I have sold a lot of my art and I have shown a lot in Athens. Um, however, I would say my biggest personal achievement, maybe the thing that made me feel the best, it was actually something that happened really recently. I was um, at the corner store buying cigarettes on Union Street and when I was signing my name, the woman behind the counter said, oh, you're Emily Beveridge. She whips out her phone and she's purchased one of my paintings and she has it saved on her phone. And then the, the man behind me buying cigarettes is like, oh, no way, I have one of your paintings too. And so that actually to me was like the sign that I'm doing the right thing. I think going into art can mean two different things. It can mean trying to make a living off of being an artist, which is in many ways one of the most difficult things you could choose to do um, with your life. Uh, or if you, Or you could think going into art as in wanting to pursue it because you have a passion, you have an interest. I don't think anything should stop anyone from pursuing a passion or an interest in art, but you have to keep in mind that it's gonna be difficult. Um, you're gonna have to put in a lot of hours of work. It's not um, completely just fun and slopping paint around. There's a lot of thought uh, that goes into it. There's a lot of dedication. Um, there's a lot of frustration and failure uh, and if you're accepting of all of those realities and you still want to do it, I say go for it. Now as far as making art as a living, again, that's one of the most difficult things you could do. I'm fortunate in that I have always been able to sell my work. I really, I, I love sharing my art with other people and I, I love getting their feedback.